So recording has started. Um, if you don't know, I'm Jenny Dale and I'm the Information Literacy Coordinator at UNCG University Libraries. Um, I proposed this University Libraries Virtual Learning Community or ULBLC, as you'll hear me call it sometimes, um, as a way to help promote peer learning and really build some community as well during this uh, unprecedented pandemic. So many of us are working remotely and I hope this project uh, helps everyone in the libraries continue to learn and share even while we are working at these uh, at least hopefully social distances. Um, so we will be posting the archived uh, version of this session later. Um, Leah has given us the okay to record it. So we will uh, paste the uh, or put we will post sorry the uh, webinar archive in our uh, LibGuide, which is at uncg.libguides.com slash ULBLC. Uh, and you will also uh, be able to learn more and kind of see what's coming up. I do have some additional things scheduled, which I'm going to send an announcement out about today. Um, but just some logistical things. You may have heard um, Sam say some similar things, but uh, you should be muted upon entry. You will be able to unmute yourself uh, later on if we if you have questions and you want to express your questions that way. Um, however, you're welcome to participate in chat. And if you have questions while Leah is presenting, uh, chat is the best place to answer those. So Sam and I will be kind of keeping track of those questions that are coming up in chat. Uh, while Leah is presenting, and then we will, uh, during her sort of Q and A dedicated time, we will uh, share those with Leah so that she can respond. If you have any tech issues, you can use the chat, but you can also email Sam uh, at slharlow at uncg.edu so that she can kind of guide you through some solutions. Um, but if if worst case scenario, I know there's been a lot going on with different technology this week. Um, we will be having the session recorded. So if anything does happen, you will be able to access it later. So before I introduce Leah, does anybody have any questions in the chat? We're good to go in the chat. Um, again, remember all the information is on the chat. Just to tell everyone logistically, um, the chat, if you don't see it, uh, there's an icon. If you hover your mouse at the bottom of your screen, that is a chat bubble, then that will make it appear to your right. Uh, that is also where you could unmute yourself. Please don't unmute yourself while Leah is talking. We will have time for questions at the end. Um, okay. Thanks. And then I will I will now introduce our speaker today. Uh, our session is being hosted by our health sciences librarian, Leah Leininger. She's going to be talking about how to find high quality health information online, which we thought was a great first topic for the ULVLC considering our current situation. So I am going to turn it over to Leah now, and it looks like Sam has already given her hosting. So we are good to go. All right, thanks, Leah. Thank you, Jenny, and thank you everybody for joining me um, now or folks who watch later. Uh, I'm looking forward to presenting this to y'all and I am just going to mute my video. And then I will get started. So y'all have the link to the to the slides and they'll be posted later. So is this a scary time? Yes, but. I feel really strong about what we are able to do as library folks. Um, it is absolutely our time to shine. So we really have been um, you know, used to finding information and making it available. I focus on the health sciences, but I know also all of my coworkers have these amazing strengths um, in terms of things that you do with information, your past experiences, hobbies, jobs, y'all all have something to bring. So. I'm excited about this presentation in that I'm going, definitely going to give my perspective on some of my favorite websites. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, evaluating sources the way I do with usually students, um, but um, I've adapted it some for our situation. And I look forward to this being sort of an open session. I think we have a lot, I feel like I have a lot to share and I think we have a lot to share with each other too, so. I do wanna go over a little bit of um, a few caveats in context. I wanna talk about some favorite online sources. 
And as I mentioned, um, I would like to go over source evaluation and then a little bit of wrap up and definitely some informal discussion time. Yes, of the content that we have here, but also we are all working remotely. So um, if we want to pause the recording at the end after final questions for the content of this session, maybe we could touch base and turn our webcams back on and just check in with each other and see how we're doing. I can tell you that um, it's been really sort of nourishing for me to see people online, not just through email, but also in some of these online meetings. So with that said, let's get started. So I am not a doctor or nurse. This is something that I have to keep in mind that I cannot give health advice, even logistical information. If somebody asks, oh my gosh, what's the best way for me to get tested? or if I think I have COVID-19, um, well, things are changing really rapidly. So I am going to point out some really good places to look for information that you might want uh, about, are there some sources that you've been using? But just keep in mind, um, you know, I, I definitely need to share this as my perspective as a librarian in a situation that is rapidly changing and also with a lot that's not known. So information that we may be coming across online um, is we definitely need to look at it through the lens of one, this um, novel coronavirus really is new. So there's not a whole lot known. And sometimes as a health sciences library, when I look at different kinds of information, different formats, I tend to think of it as maybe lower level or higher level. This is so, um, this really is so new, people are studying it like you wouldn't believe, but a lot of the information that you'll find does tend to be what I'd normally think of as lower level. So maybe case reports, hey, this is what happened with 300 patients in the hospital where I work at versus a clinical trial that's been going on for three years. And we had an intervention that we performed on some people and not others, and it was blinded. So. Um, there is information out there, but you know, it is rather new. And of course, as I mentioned, yes, the situation is changing rapidly. So what does this mean in terms of information that we see? The sources that I tend to spend a lot of my time with just in my day-to-day -day work, honestly, they're peer-reviewed journal articles. I'm trying to a lot of times connect researchers with the peer-reviewed research literature, but that can take a long time to get published and get out there. So one of the things that we'll be focusing on is just online information, not even publications yet, but online information. So here are some of my favorite online sources in this area. First of all, the North Carolina um, DHHS website. It has really helpful information um, about the disease itself, about the state of things in North Carolina, tips, and I will just say that I like this website a lot, but even better, um, something that I'm checking a lot is their Twitter handle, um, which I, I follow them on Twitter, and Governor Cooper comes out and uh, gives an update. He does it with folks from the DHHS and emergency management, and the, the folks um, staffing this Twitter account will actually put out really nice bite-sized chunks very quickly for this is the current situation these are the current recommendations so i have to say i'm i'm really impressed with what our governor has been doing and what our department of health and human services has been doing in terms of keeping people up to date so if you look at it of course there's there's a main site but this is the coronavirus page um if you're like me and Perhaps you, you want to see how many cases have been found through the testing that has been done. You can click on the case count, and this probably isn't good for your mental health if you do this multiple times a day like I do, so don't do that. But um, I am a little bit addicted to doing this. Um, wow, since yesterday, many more cases here but no, that, that have been found and reported through testing, but um, no deaths reported yet. And even better, 
honestly, this is kind of reassuring to me. That's terrible, but it's true. Um, we can see hot spots in different counties. And if you click on a county, you can see how many cases have been found that are presumptive positive or confirmed positive for um, this disease. So that's the, if you wanna freak yourself out or reassure yourself, either way. Um, but of course, there's a lot more information on the um, DHHS website. So information for individuals and families, um, information about testing. I know I mentioned earlier, um, I can't say go here and do this to make sure you get tested. This is how it's being done because things are changing so rapidly and luckily, um, the availability of tests um, is becoming greater. So I would I would come to, um, this is a good website to come to and look and see what they say about testing. And of course, go through your healthcare provider. I've been getting tweets and emails about this from my doctors, so, um, or by the healthcare practices. <laughs> so that's, um, but this is also a good source for that kind of information, where to go, what's the situation with that, and lots of other, of course, we get colleges, universities, and, and schools. If you want to get sort of a, a broader than UNC system view of um, of what's going on, this is this is pretty good. And stigma, which I think is really good to point out as well. I'm just gonna click into this. So we just have to be really careful about this. This is a scary time. So be gentle with ourselves. Be gentle with other people. Um. Speaking of which, here's another, be gentle with yourself. Managing overall health. Yay, reducing stress and anxiety. This is also very, very important right now. So, tips to reduce stress. Thank you, NCDHHS. So there's a lot of information here. It really is one of my go-to places for the most updated information. I usually um, follow them on Twitter, like I was saying. And of course, you'll, you'll probably notice a trend <laughs> here. My favorite online sources that I go to um, are sort of governmental or, um, or similar websites. So there's also a coronavirus page from the CDC, which has similar information to the NCDHHS page, but this is interesting. Just to note, and I'm sure you're aware of this, of course, we're not gonna get North Carolina context. Here's what's going on in our state. But you click in, um, wow, they, they have quite a few resources to put some good messaging up about what to do. So easier to read, easier to understand information on what to do. And of course, a, a broader geographic context as well. And the NCDHHS website does link out to um, the CDC in many cases. Yeah, the visual icons are fantastic. And of course, the World Health Organization, who can forget about them? So, situation updates, research and guidance, um, and a lot of information here. This is actually not a page that I'm coming to on a daily basis, but um, you know, it is a good site. And when I put my head together with some of the other librarians, I just couldn't leave it off the list. So just remember World Health Organization, also quite good. I feel like Bridget Jones at this point. So um, chat prompts that I hope y'all can see that it might be a little covered up. Dang it, by my little excuse the, the tech moment here. I've got a, a little slide adjuster. Can y'all see a tech? I have um, been putting your ch your um, links in the chat periodically, Leah, just to let you know. And there's no question. Great, okay. So optional chat prompt, because I do need to pause every now and then so that we can touch base with each other, so we can discuss this, because these really are just a few of my top ones. Which online sources have you been finding useful? So put into chat if there are sources that you've been checking or that you've been liking. So this is definitely to crowdsource this a little bit, but also 
to give me an opportunity to just go on and on without making lots of slides because you don't want many, many slides. Michelle says, Leah has been my source. Aww. <laughs> Anyone else want to put their sources or source in the chat? Jenny mentions the NCDHS. Uh, Charlie put a chat to um, experience.arcgis.com. Um, and then Jenny said Medline Plus. Yes. Oh, interesting. Okay, so the CDC. Very cool. So I'm, yeah, I'm also seeing a lot of, I second the CDC, the NCDHHS, that's that's great. Um, this is a source that I had not looked at before. It looks like, um, I'm seeing a little World Health Organization logo, I think. So just to get an overview, put it in context here. And I do like bubble maps. And just to put a plug in, since somebody mentioned this in the chat, in usual times, my very favorite of all consumer health websites is Medline Plus. This is um, a free website from the US National Library of Medicine, and it's a portal to other websites that um, have been vetted and that are really high quality, that are really transparent about the information that they're giving. So I decided not to put it in my list because you come here and they have this lovely banner that says, hey, go to the CDC or latest research information. The NIH does have a, a page. So um, Medline Plus is great, but um, definitely, and I'm not going to say don't use it, but since it um, is pointing back to the CDC page, that's the one that I chose to show. But um, explore this one on your own. So looking at other things. Oh, sh sh scary, sh scary stories shared on Twitter. Oh, I'm so there. Yes, yes, absolutely. Stories from healthcare providers, stories from patients. Um, I've been freaking myself out with those. And Nick put um, a worldometers.info um, there, and he mentioned that they do cite their sources. Um, note to Medline Plus on there um, if you all need it. And similar to, Franklin said, similar to Charlie's, but from John Hopkins. Uh, it's another GIS map of um, that, you, you have it up. Um, and Amy said, that is a really cool site. Beautiful, okay. This is great, y'all. So I'm going to close a few of these. And I'm going to move on to um, just the next phase, which is source evaluation. Absolutely, it should start with common sense. Health information really does need to be there to help or inform your judgment, not replace it. So. We've seen some really kooky things online. I know we all have. Um, one that stands out as a little extreme is the idea of um, drinking bleach to cure coronavirus. Um, there have been all kinds of people talking about um, go out in the sunlight or my favorite, this was actually on TV. Um, it was a celebrity doctor who said, do you wanna find out if you have coronavirus? Hold your breath for 10 seconds. If you can do that, you don't have it. So <laughs> I'm gonna say before I before I give like the librarian or my version of the, these are things you should look for, I'm gonna say common sense first and last. Um, so optional chat prompt at this moment, if you feel like participating, you don't have to. Have you seen some really bad or even just sort of questionable information out there? And if I'd had more time, I would have put Cookie pictures up here of cookie things people have been saying. I see a yes in all caps. Yeah. Oh, 
Oh my goodness. Yes, we're, we're seeing some. Okay. Hand sanitizer recipes. So I'm just going to go back and, and say, if somebody is giving you their homemade recipe for something that is topical, you are going to apply to yourself. Just, just please don't do it. Really don't do it. Um, if you feel like you must do something like that, just, I know this is simplistic, but look for information on it from a .gov, the WHO, CDC, something like that, um, medlineplus.gov. Don't just look at Uncle um, Joe's like recipe for whatever. Oh yeah, drinking colloidal silver kills the virus. Yeah, saw that one too. Agree. Um, there are lots of some of these I've learned about from librarians saying they're really silly. I've had that experience too. Um, I have not heard that drinking vinegar is supposed to kill the virus. That is interesting. <laughs> okay, y'all have made me most amused. Thank you. So this is the version of the evaluating sources test. Or, or that I tend to use. Um, different librarians sometimes use a crap test or they pull from the framework. They do all kinds of things. I tend to use the ABCD test. So if you are looking at a source, one, can you determine the credentials of the person or organization who is producing the information, who's responsible for it? So this might be um, advanced degrees or um, affiliation with a hospital or a healthcare network. But honestly, if you do look at things like um, primary source articles, sometimes the language is really specialized. Sometimes they can be hard to understand. So I do feel like science communicators, like or, or such as um, professional journalists, have a really important role to play all the time, but especially now, investigating the um, reports that are going on, investigating the research that is being done and trying to give context to it and trying to translate it a little bit for the rest of us. So when I say authority, if you look at a source, um, you know, A is, is um, not just is the person have background and experience in the content area or does the person have background and experience in communicating, communicating science responsibly? So just to remember, also experts can be mistaken. Sometimes they disagree. Don't um, stop at the authority part of this test. No ad hominem stuff. Just because someone is an expert doesn't make the content true, okay? Of course, there's also balance. Um, and no matter how authoritative somebody is or how much of an expert, um, this is a really scary time. And so people might be just saying some rather inflammatory things, um, which might give or communicate a message um, that isn't really terribly helpful. So just look at the source. Does it look informative versus persuasive? Is there context in it? So if they're giving an idea for prevention or cure, we're not talking about at this point, but we will be sometime, hopefully, um, or something else, are they talking about pros, cons, drawbacks? Do they mention unanswered questions, how this fits into other discussions in this area? Look for context is basically my, my sort of take on this. And of course, currency, very, very different during the time of the pandemic. I think that today or this week is best. If you're looking at a source that is older, is this information that is likely to go out of date? So sure, use information that's older than today or older than this week. But um, you know, examples of that that might be helpful are things like, what public health powers does my um, county have, or does the governor have? You know, the governor maybe has said that he would like gatherings to be limited to a certain number of people. Of course, maybe then a few days later he says, now this is an executive order. So kind of knowing who in the state has which powers to do what, um, that's, that's useful information that doesn't go out of date very quickly. And there are lots of other examples too, in terms of um, how is the virus being spread? What is the science of it? 
that really is changing quickly. And of course, as y'all all realize, there just aren't enough tests. And so we're only aware of the, te the, the tests that we're able to, to do and to know about. And of course, documentation. When you're looking at sources, please click, um, what, what, think about what sources they use to get their information. So good newspaper articles, good web pages um, will click through. They'll have a references list or a link out to where they got their information and really be especially mindful right now, clicking through to those sources to see the information to for yourself. So of course we all remember the telephone game, you know, somebody starts by whispering a message in somebody's ear. And as the message goes through the room or around the circle, by the end, it's really, really distorted. So a lot of people who are doing their best to communicate um, scary and quickly changing information are maybe interpreting it a little bit, or they might be um, sort of trying to make it understandable. Some of the, the message might be lost, some of the nuances. So if you can, I got the sources. And there you go. Overall, see, talk to your healthcare provider. I know that's a tricky thing to say, but um, more and more healthcare providers are offering not just phone, but they're offering um, uh, like telemedicine, which might be live online. It might be just taking pictures or something. Talk to your healthcare professional. Um, searching the internet is useful, but absolutely remember to evaluate your sources. Start with a common sense, you know, check the reality check and, and go through ABCDs and don't spend all your time um, looking at this. It's, it's not healthy. And of course, follow up with your doctor or nurse, et cetera. So this looks a little complex in terms of advice. I'll tell you what I do. Um, I know in a lot of cases I, I won't, but I will just say, I have a reputation among my healthcare providers. I will take pages of notes. Um, and I will take all of them to an appointment if I have an appointment, but I will actually write down questions. This is what I'm wondering about. This is what I wanna know, you know, so on and so forth. And that kind of helps keep me on track. So, and when I do go to an appointment, I, I usually do take notes while I'm there. So um, to summarize, there is a lot of uncertainty right now. Things are changing quickly. Use trusted online sources, but definitely lead with your common sense. Lead with your compassion. And there is a library guide for finding health information that has links out to free sources like Medline Plus. It, um, it does have links to databases with journal articles, news articles, and so on and so forth. But right now, that guide is really better for health topics that are not rapidly changing. Remember, any publication is going to take some time. So looking like newspaper articles, really current ones. Um, but the peer reviewed journal articles, you know, those are going to be much older. And yet, at the moment, this guide is out of date. So I definitely want to thank you all for all of your suggestions on websites that you have found useful, guess what? You have contributed to this guide. I am going to be adding some of the links that came up to this guide to help others. So this is Sam. Um, Y'all can start putting your questions in the chat. Um, you could also unmute yourself at this time. Um, I did want to point out that there was a conversation going on um, that was started by um, Shonda on um, if you make your own sanitizer lab muffin science as a chemist and she uses the who recipe and has provided a spreadsheet so you can get the 60 percent alcohol base recommended in your final product on the percentage and she dropped a link to that in the chat um, and jenny said it was watching this video that made me so concerned about the diy hand sanitizer i dropped the link to the libguide in there Amy said, um, my fifth grader had a scholastic news flyer about coronavirus and is already way out of date. It was a great information literacy opportunity. Um, so if anyone else has stories or again, they themselves or they have link suggestions um, or um, questions for Leah, uh, please put it in the chat. 
Um, we are still being recorded. Uh, so if we want to, in a couple of minutes uh, after we ask questions, uh, turn the recording off, we can do that. Just let me know. And I will say, I love that Amy leveraged that opportunity to share her, um, her expertise with her kid's class, her kid and her kid, kid's class. I feel like the chat has been really active. Sorry, I'll- Yeah, I'll... no, no, you're fine. I was gonna say, so this is, this is Jenny. Um, if you have questions or comments to put in the chat, uh, this is a great opportunity to do that. Uh, Leah, I just wanted to say I really liked the um, way that you described the ABCD kind of evaluation framework. Um, so I really appreciated some of the context stuff that you put in there that I hadn't really thought about and how uh, I like, especially in terms of thinking about health information. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I'm glad this has been helpful and I'm especially glad that um, Jenny coordinated it and that Sam has been recording it. I think this is going to be useful for everybody and a nice internal professional development opportunity. Um, Leah, are you seeing Charlie's chat? Yep. Let me let me restate it a little bit. I'm um, not restate it, but so um, con so I see some concern about the possibility of medical personnel, caregivers, uh, et cetera, being able to vet all of this information. So this is very helpful. If they're busy trying to treat people, that is very draining, and they may simply not have enough time or energy left to do the required research. So. I think you're really right about that. One of the things um, to know about is that some hospitals actually have librarians on staff. They are the clinical hospital librarians. So their scope of practice is a little bit different than um, what I do in a university, but um, they don't have some of the, and in their maybe hospital library, they don't have the huge journal collections that we have um, that I'm used to dealing with every day. But on the other hand, they have these sources that are basically clinical information summaries um, that really are being updated very quickly. So the librarian has will have access to some really nice information tools. And also they are there to not just say, OK, try this term or try that term. They will actually you know, put together reports and and um, gather the information for the healthcare provider. And of course, again, still the dilemma of who has time for that, but um, you know, that's at least kind of a slightly different setup in hospitals that do have librarians. And that would be, you know, the larger hospitals. But yeah, I'm, I have many concerns about our medical personnel right here. I don't know if y'all want to hear my, my anxiety. Um, <laughs> I've been hearing a lot of chatter about PPE, um, the, the personal protective equipment, the shortage of it. So um, that is so important for our healthcare personnel. It's not just they're working a lot of shifts. They're, they're really um, working hard to try and make space for um, a surge if it happens, um, but also they need to have that protection. So. I think that's that's something else that's going to be coming up and and I've been watching that with with some anxiety. So are there any questions, uh, other questions again, you can unmute yourself or put them in the chat um, again, I am happy to. Um, uh, turn the recording off and people can turn their video cameras on and say hello. Um, I know again that a lot of us probably hasn't been able to see a lot of people over the last couple of days. Uh, so I'm happy to do that. And um, yeah, I'm going to meet myself again. Okay, yeah. So I'll call for any 
final questions on the record. Um, if you want to say it or ask it for the record, chat it now. Otherwise, we'll get Sam to um, stop the recording and we'll we'll take our hair down. As it <clears throat> and lastly, um, on the recording, Jenny, I'm pulling up the assessment link, but do you want to talk about the next session coming up on Monday before people maybe leave or turn? on yes absolutely um thank you all so much for coming um this is our first foray into the ul vlc um sam is going to drop a link in the chat to a uh, quick survey um that you can take to let us know how uh we can continue to improve this program uh we at this point not all of it has been fully uh advertised yet but at this point we have something scheduled every day next week um so again i would encourage you to head to that uh research guide which is uh uncg.libguides.com ulvlc or email or sam if you have any questions um, but we do have a discussion forum session on Monday, which is being uh, coordinated by or led by Lois Barnes Vincent from Access Services. And that's going to be about student employee training. And it's going to be kind of a casual, informal discussion. Um, and many of you have also signed up for that. Um, but I think that is going to be really fun and interesting too. And then again, we have something basically every day next week. I haven't announced the one for Tuesday yet. Big news about the one for Thursday. We are doing library wide trivia. Know your libraries trivia, which we will be hosting live using Kahoot. Um, so I will be sending out more information about that uh, later today. But again, thank you all so much for coming and especially thank you to Leah for presenting and to Sam for doing all of the tech coordination. Um, and I will say, uh, Sam, I think we can go ahead and turn off the recording and then let anybody who wants to, uh, like you said, let their hair down. I like that. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to turn the recording off now. Stop.